everybody! Welcome to the mystery animal episode of Wonder Ventures. Today, you are going to act like a scientist and figure out what the identity is of a mystery animal. Hmm, that sounds fun. Let's get started on this venture. Have you ever seen something and you just didn't know what it was? Yeah, that happens to me sometimes. In fact, recently, I was out in my garden and I saw something. And that's what got me wondering about mystery animals. Before we start this, let's do a little practice. Let's see if we can do some identification together. We'll use some animals and see if we can figure out what they are or what they are related to. Let's give it a try. What animal is this? A bird, you say? Hmm, good job. But how did you know it was a bird? Oh, it has wings and feathers and a beak. I got it. Hmm, let's try another one. Hmm. You nailed it. That's a turtle. But how did you know it was a turtle? What features did it have that let you know it was a turtle? Here are a few more that you can try. And after each one, you can stop and talk about it. How do you know what it is? What special features does it have? Hmm, what features do birds have? Mammals, reptiles, or insects? Scientists use something called classification so that they can identify and place animals in groups. We're going to take a look at an animal called a red eft. These can actually be found in New York. You can find them usually when it's damp, wet, and you look under leaves. If a scientist found this animal, it would ask a series of questions. Is this something alive? Is it an animal? What kind of body covering does it have? Feathers, fur, scales. These questions would help the scientist figure out the grouping or the classification of the red eft. From asking these questions, the scientist would figure out where the animal fits or where it is related. Is the red eft more like a snake or like a frog? Is the red eft related to an alligator or more like a salamander? Does the eft fit into the reptile group like a turtle or the amphibian group like a newt? Scientists would ask those questions. They would observe, look for similarities, and then make decisions based on the evidence. Okay, are you ready to be a scientist faced with the job of observing, asking questions, comparing, and making a claim with evidence? Okay, here we go. Last week, I was looking at some flowers in my garden, and I noticed something unusual. So I went inside, I grabbed my camera, and I took a video because I knew that you would be able to help me figure out what this was in my garden. I'm going to show the entire video, and you can always stop and rewind and watch it again. As you watch it, think about what you're looking at. What do you think this is in my garden? It's time to take out your science notebooks. We're going to see if you can answer some questions about this animal. Questions like, is it something alive? How do you know that? Is it an animal? Well, how do you know that? What features do you see? Wings, legs, hair, feathers, scales, any other body parts? What can it do? Is it flying or swimming or running? What does it look like it's doing? Is it eating? Resting, sleeping, record what you see. Take out those notebooks. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Good recording, boys and girls. So maybe you're thinking that this animal is a type of bird or a bee or maybe a butterfly. What scientists would do next is they would look for examples of those animals so that they could compare the unknown or mystery animal with animals that they do know. So we're going to take a look. We're going to take a look at a bird called a hummingbird. We're also going to look at a bee and we're going to look at a butterfly. Your job is going to be to decide which animal is most like our mystery animal. Let's watch those videos and then compare what we see. It's time to make a choice. I know that might be a little difficult, but we're going to base our answers on what evidence we have so far. I'm going to ask you to finish this sentence for me. I think the mystery animal is a bird, a bee, or a butterfly because. Now, the because is the important part here. That's where you get to give your reasons or your evidence for your choice. Let's take some time to discuss this with our classmates. We can do this either virtually or in class. If you both agree on the same animal, well, that's great. Make sure you share your reasons for why you're choosing that animal. But if you disagree with your partner, that's where the fun begins because you can argue with your classmate. Yes, I said argue. You can argue by defending what you're thinking with your evidence and your ideas. And you might even change your mind based on something that someone says during an argument. And that is exactly what happens in science. That is fantastic. If you want to learn more about this animal, check out Wonder Ventures at Easy STEM. For part two, this is where Mark Frazier is going to take you on a walk, a nature walk, and you'll discover the true identity of the mystery animal. It's called a hummingbird moth. Yeah, I said hummingbird moth. How cool is that? All the time we have today. Thank you for joining us on Wonder Ventures. We will see you next time.